Okay, so to start, I'm going to make my own sauce. You could skip this entire beginning of the video and just use store-bought sauce. But here I have two cans of peeled San Marzano uh, tomatoes. And you can see in the back, it does come with some sea salt and basil leaf in the mix. But I'm still going to season this when I make it. So I don't have a food mill to kind of puree and strain it. So I'm using a fine wire mesh strainer and a wooden spoon. You could also put this into a blender, puree it, and strain it, but I'm gonna take my time today. I'm gonna do things the hard way, like I always do. Ultimately, I'm going to end up with all the seeds and skin left in my wire strainer. And I'll repeat the process for the second can as well. And here's what I ended up with. I didn't actually measure how much tomato puree goes into this. I always just use two 28 ounce cans of this for my pasta sauce. So in a cold pan, I am going to cover the bottom of the pan with olive oil. I'd say maybe a third cup of olive oil. Now three crushed cloves of garlic. I'm also adding the last of my basil from my basil plant and a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes. I'll say that's optional, but I like the flavor of crushed red pepper flakes in my pasta sauces. So now over a low heat, I'm just going to bring this up to a gentle sizzle simmer. This is going to make the olive oil and the pasta sauce very aromatic with the garlic and basil. So I'm going to remove the basil. I'll probably add it back into the sauce. I'm just gonna remove it for now so I can pour in the puree. So once this is all in my pan, I'm going to give it a mix. I'm also going to be adding salt and pepper to taste. I'll start with probably a half teaspoon of salt a quarter teaspoon of cracked black pepper. At some point throughout the cooking process, give it a taste and adjust. So I wanna show you I added the basil back into my sauce and over a medium, medium low simmer here or a heat, I'm gonna let this reduce and simmer for about one hour, 45 minutes to an hour. And you will want to mix throughout the cooking process. You can offset a lid. I'm using a splatter screen because this will start to pop and splatter. Things could get messy. So halfway through, it's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna give the sauce a taste and adjust the seasoning. Okay, so it's been an hour and this has reduced, thickened, and become so flavorful and aromatic. This is done. So now I'm gonna show you what I did with my chicken. I have three chicken breasts. This is around a pound and a half, and I am going to butterfly it and pound it out thin. Now you could purchase chicken cutlets from your grocery store, which are a lot thinner. This, what I'm doing today, is probably a quarter of an inch thick, a quarter of an inch to a third inch thick, so it's not super thin. And because I'm not pounding it out ultra thin, the cook time is going to vary. So if you're working with a thinner piece of chicken, it's going to fry and cook a lot quicker. So I'm gonna gently pound it out with my rolling pin and repeat the process for my other two pieces of chicken breast. So here I have my cutlets and these are ready to be breaded and dredged. Okay, so here in my pie plate, I've added a half cup of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of cracked black pepper. I'm going to give that a mix. I'm also going to be using two large eggs. I'm just going to beat these, and to thin it out just a bit, I like to add two to three tablespoons of cold water into the mix. Now for my breadcrumbs, I'm using plain breadcrumbs that I already added a quarter cup of pre-grated Parmesan cheese. Now time to bread my chicken cutlets into the flour dredge. I'm just going to flour each side and you'll want to shake off the excess. Now into my egg wash, both sides, and now into my breadcrumbs. 
and you'll want to repeat the process for all of your chicken. I'm going to place this on a baking sheet and once I've breaded all of my chicken, I'm going to let it hang out for about 10 to 15 minutes to, to remove the chill and allow the breading to adhere better before you fry it. So it's been about 10 to 15 minutes and I preheated my oil. This is going to be a shallow fry. I've used grapeseed oil for this and I'm going to fry each piece for less than five minutes. These are thin chicken cutlets. Now they're not the thinnest so again the cook time will vary. If you're working with thin pieces of chicken it's less than a minute on each side but I'm going to cook this until it's cooked through and the exterior is golden brown probably around a minute and a half to two minutes on each side. Once my chicken has cooked on both sides, I'm going to remove it from my oil and place on a baking sheet with a wire rack to hang out. And I'm just going to continue cooking my other two pieces of chicken. So I'll be using around four ounces of low moisture mozzarella, four ounces of fresh mozzarella, and around one and a half to two ounces of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. You could use all fresh mozzarella for this. I just had a combination. So here in a baking dish, I'm going to ladle in a couple of scoops of my sauce and just spread it around. Now I'm going to sprinkle on some of my freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Next I'm going to add my chicken cutlets. I'm only adding two because that's all that'll fit in this dish. Now some more of my sauce on each piece. And now I'm going to add my cheeses on top. Here I have the Parmesan and then the low moisture and fresh mixed. And I'm going to broil this for a minute and a half or until the cheese is melted and bubbly. And once it's done, you can serve this right on top of your favorite pasta or with a side salad like I'm going to do. But this is how I make chicken Parmesan. Garnish with parsley, I had some basil leaves, and it's so good. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.